All right, so now I've got the R. And let's see if I need to do this. So who should I pass the, well, I guess maybe this doesn't have that. So I think whoever is gonna present, like, I guess you should feel free to start sharing. And basically who already is. Awesome, uh, Jitin, I think you have the presentation. So um, uh, Jitin will be presenting, but I'll be glad to kick off the presentation. Great. Okay. Um, are are we ready? Yeah, I think let's let's go whenever you're ready. Okay, great. Can I just get a sense of how much time we have so that we can time box this properly? Um, so the only uh, only other agenda items that I am aware of is um, you know Danny posted the update to the working group proposal. So maybe I thought we should be good to kind of touch on that. Um, otherwise, I'm not aware of any any other business. So let's let's hear. Like, do, that, do anyone want to bring something specifically to discuss? And if not, then you know, I think you can. You basically have all the all the time, really. So you know, thirty minutes, forty-five minutes, whatever suits you. Okay, great. Well, listen. Thank you. Um, thank you for that, and and really thank you to the foundation for um, you know, giving us the time and the opportunity to present what you know what we built and what we think is going to be really interesting for the open source community at large. Um, my name is Gil Yehuda, and what I really wanted to do was um, introduce the team and, and just kick off what, what we'd like to do here. Um, so uh, on the call with me, um, we have Vanu, Tiff, uh, and Jitin from um, the Screwdriver team. And we also have Ashley, Rosalie, and myself from the open source team. Uh, we're at Verizon Media, um, but we're, we're also from Yahoo. and, and um, Verizon Media, as, as you'll see in the presentation, is, is a company that was born out of um, a merger of Yahoo, AOL, and, and a bunch of other um, uh, companies. So uh, we have really a Yahoo story and its evolution. Um, we built a really interesting CI/CD solution that we use across the company. We built it for the open source community. We built it because uh, we needed it, but we also think that other, um, other folks um, would need it and would be able to use it, and it would be appropriate in in this neutral home for CI/CD or for CD technology. So we wanted to go through a little bit of the history of what we built and why, um, and we also wanted to share details as to you know what it does and how it does it, and then field questions from from the foundation about it. Um, and really, the objective is to see that it becomes. Um, accepted into the foundation through the foundation's process, I guess as, a, as an incubator project, um, and eventually through the process as a, as a top level, however the foundation works with respect to those fun, uh, to, to the product or project evolution. Um, mm -hmm. I find it interesting, and with that, what I really wanted to do was pass this off to Jitin for presentation. Before he starts, any questions about the objective or, um, or what we're here for? No, I think so far so good. Okay, so uh, Jitin, uh, can you take over the present the uh, show? Yep. Uh, I'm trying to share my screen. It says I cannot start screen share while other participant is sharing. All right, Sorry, let me stop mine. How about now? All right. Uh, can you see my screen? There we go. Uh, yep. All right, so uh, first of all, thank you everyone for giving us the opportunity to uh, come here and present about Screwdriver. So myself, I'm, I'm Jitin Emmanuel, I'm the product owner for Screwdriver. Within Verizon Media, I lead the team, which is primarily responsible for the product development and operations of Screwdriver within Verizon Media. And uh, so first of all, I wanna start with saying we are, a big proponents of uh, CI/CD. So one of the main motivations or goals for Screwdriver was no humans involved. We wanted a system which deals or which creates reproducibility, reliability, and quality of the products which are built within Yahoo. And we believe in automation and we wanted to make sure that all the, all the builds which passes through our build system they are 100% automated testing and with minimal manual interaction before it's released into your production environments. 
And we are really excited about the formation of CD Foundation, making sure that all the toolings, uh, open source CD toolings are available under one umbrella. So big thanks for that. And thanks for the opportunity for presenting here. And uh, about who we are, uh, so Verizon Media is home to a uh, lot of products like AOL, Huffington Post, Yahoo Finance Mail, which are used by over a billion users. And Screwdriver CD, this came out of Yahoo. And uh, this is the build tool, which is powering the build, test, and deploy life cycle for the entire product at Verizon Media. Right? And our engineers, they build products across different spectrums. Like there are mobile applications from both iOS, Android, there are web-based applications, and there are dual server-side applications. And in 2012, uh, that is when the Scudaver Asset project started. At that point, each team used to maintain their own pipelines. And there was a need for a centralized CI tooling where, uh, where users can come and say, this is my product, and I want to build this. So that, at a nutshell, that was the initial design or product philosophy for Screwdriver. Our users come to Screwdriver and they simply come and say, oh, this is my build configuration, which they can write in simple YAML configuration. And we have this notion of pipeline as a code, which our users will provide. And they check that into your source code management system, whether that is GitLab or GitHub or GitHub Enterprise. So Screwdriver understands that and and builds and uh, creates your build pipelines on your own. So it worked for us for a while. And initially, Scootriver was just an uh, orchestrator on top of Jenkins. We provided an UI where our users can come and say, OK, uh, use, use this configuration to build my application, whether that's a web application or a mobile application. But at some point, we hit a wall in terms of the capabilities which we can provide to the users. They wanted a lot of cool workflow features, running builds in parallel, uh, running it across latest uh, containers. But at that point, the containers were getting adopted in the industry. So that's when uh, we decided to redesign Screwdriver from ground up based on the tremendous developer feedback we received from our, our users. So when we designed the Scudaver V4, that, that's the one which we open sourced, we, we designed it in a way that it's not just specific for the needs of one company. We, we, want, we were using a lot of open source tools at that point, and we really wanted to give back to the community and make sure that whatever product we are designing and spending a lot more, that can work towards the scale of any organization. And at that point, we were running over 30,000 daily bills running across various use cases and solving uh, not just build, but testing, deployment, various deployment strategies. And we wanted to make sure that whatever system we develop that can work for the scale of uh, our current user base, which is Yahoo developers. And at the same time, it's flexible enough that any organization can take it, deploy it into their infrastructure uh, without any ties to any proprietary technologies we use. Right? And as a result, we designed and developed Scodever.cd which we open sourced uh, uh, in 2016, right? And uh, so when we when we designed Scudaver.cd, uh, containers were getting getting steam. Kubernetes was coming into picture, so we totally imagined a build system uh, where the builds are actually short-lived containers. And at the same time, we didn't want to make sure that we are not tied specifically to containers. And whatever system we come up with, it has to work for a lot of use cases. Because there are people who are using Jenkins and there are people who are using Kubernetes. And uh, we designed it in a way that the system has the flexibility to use whatever the uh, cluster administration determines that the users needs. So uh, on a very high level, uh, this is how the Scudaver build process flows. A user comes and they create a project through a screwdriver or using your CM. It goes to our API. Then our API picks up an execution engine. This execution engine is what ultimately runs your builds. And that can be Jenkins, or uh, that can be Kubernetes, or that can be just pure Docker. And once the build is completed, 
it archives the data using log storage, using caching, and it publishes a bunch of artifacts to the artifact store of your organization's choice. Right. right. And uh, this is, uh, in a nutshell, the design philosophy of Screwdriver. You start your build, you publish your artifacts, and you deploy that to your infrastructure. So as far as the developer is concerned, it's all about you commit your code, you test your code, you release it, and it goes on like a cycle. And towards the left side of the current slide, you can see this is all it takes for creating a screwdriver pipeline as far as a user is concerned. You simply write in YAML, what are your jobs and the relationship between them. And behind the scenes, the screwdriver will pick what executor it's configured with. And that can be Jenkins, that can be Docker, or that can be Kubernetes. And it runs in that specific executor. And it's also designed in mind with a way that you can pick and choose what components your infrastructure needs, or it can be Postgres, or it can be uh, MariaDB, or MySQL, or where your application can run. You can run your application at scale in Kubernetes, or, <coughs> or you can even run the mass plain, plain Docker containers. Uh, quick overview on stats. So today, within Verizon Media, we run over 50,000 daily bills and we have over 45,000 projects. And we support over uh, 10 programming languages and uh, a lot of platforms which our users comes and creates. So these platforms are where the scaling happens. This is where a team comes and say, this is my CD solution, and these are the tools I want to go with it. So they create a platform out of it and package all of them together. And Screwdriver provides this infrastructure where any subject matter expert can come and say, I want to build a platform for building and releasing Node.js applications. And they can release the platform and any users of Screwdriver infrastructure can use that platform to do their build process. So history we spoke about, it, it went through multiple iterations and uh, Screwdriver V4 is the current one we are talking about today, which is our open source uh, Screwdriver. So before we proceed any further, any, any questions so far? Um, yeah, so let's see. I, I'm happy to wait, hold, hold off questions until the end, but if you... Okay. I think that works. Uh, I can go ahead and we can take all the questions from there. I'm sorry, say that again. Do you want me to say them now or do you want me to wait until the end? No, sorry. I can go ahead and we can take all the questions towards the end. <coughs> Does that work? Uh, I'm sorry. I still, didn't, I still didn't get that. No, I can just go ahead and we can take all the questions towards ah. the end. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, so this is what I briefly mentioned earlier that uh, all the builds are containerized. And at the same time, you have the option to pick different executors. And we also have designed an executor based on open source hyper container technology, which enables you to run a container as a VM. So if you are, if you are deploying Screwdriver in your organization and it is a multi-tenant infrastructure, which is the case of Verizon Media, and we wanted a stricter build isolation. And that's the reason we created hyper container based build executor. Um, and now I want to quickly touch base on some of the powerful features which Scodriver has. Uh, and I will quickly show one pipeline uh, in our open source instance. So we support fan in, fan out use cases, uh, easy rollback workflows, connecting different pipelines using remote triggers. And if you want to run your bills periodically, uh, you your jobs. And if you want to establish build constraints, like freeze windows, like don't run the build during this period, uh, or, uh, or block the jobs using constraints, the workflow infrastructure of Screwdriver enables this. And I just want to quickly show you one build pipeline which follows, uh, which follows the standard. So right now, what you are seeing in my screen is the UI for Screwdriver. To the right side, you will see these are all the events, which are basically commits happening on uh, your Git instance. And on the left side is a single run of the Screwdriver pipeline. So this current pipeline shows that 
this this particular event started off as an external trigger. It started the build job, then it fanned out to run two other jobs. Okay, then, uh, can I interrupt a second? Um, were you able to, are you sharing the screen uh, of the, of the uh, screwdriver? Yes. At least I was not able to see the screen. Uh, I, I wanted to find out if anybody else is. Uh... Right, we're not seeing the screwdriver screen. We're, we're just seeing the presentation. So if you want to just reshare the screen, we can see the screwdriver. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, give me one second. So you, you can see my presentation right now. Okay. Uh, let me reshare my screen. And, and while you're doing that, Jitin, I'll just remind any anyone um, there is a chat in Zoom. So if anyone has a question uh, that wants that and wants to queue up the question, uh, please feel free to use that chat. We'll uh, we're watching it so that we could ensure that um, you know that everyone's questions are addressed. Yeah. Um, and then Jitin, you can, can share. Can you see Scrivener UI right now? Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right, so sorry about that. Uh, to my right side, you will see all the events, which are basically a history of your bills. And on the left side, you will see a single run of the screwdriver pipeline. So screwdriver looks at this file called screwdriver.yaml, and whatever user has configured in the YAML, screwdriver builds this UI out of it. Uh, on, in this case, you are in your left side, you can see that this pipeline started off with a build job, then it found out to two separate jobs called deploying East and West. And once this two jobs are completed, then the screwdriver engine will fan in one single job called the test. So this is a very basic workflow which contains a bunch of serial and parallel builds. And if you have any pull requests open, then they will come here. But right now I don't have any. And you sir, how they start the pipeline is they either make some code changes to GitHub or they can simply click on the start button to start a manual run of the pipeline, right? And this UI, uh, in this case, what you can see is it started off and viewed the build job. And if I go to the build details page, it will show me what the big steps that are happening. So right now it's starting up the process uh, and it completed the builds because most of these are dummy steps. And uh, clicking on a specific uh, step will show you the logs for the step on the right side. And this is a build detail flow, and you can interact with the UI to go back to the header. So right now you can see that after the build, two jobs have started. Uh, they are queued, and they will be executed in parallel. All right, so this was the screwdriver UI in a nutshell. I'm gonna uh, go back to the presentation. Um, give me one second. Yeah. All right, so can you see my presentation? Yep. Okay, so back to the presentation. All right. So in terms of workflow capabilities, uh, we, we also support advanced workflows, like if you have a monorepo, and uh, if you use feature branches for your development, or if you want to keep your screwdriver config separate, uh, we call that external config. And another workflow feature we provide is pull request workflow. So we had a lot of use cases where users wants to run the entire pipeline, even on a pull request. Like even before a pull request gets merged, they want to see how the changes behave so that uh, you can deploy that to a test infrastructure, uh, run your test cases against it, bring up an application. So pull request workflow enables all those features. So a lot of this, or almost all these features were designed based on the tremendous developer feedback we got from our internal users. And when we designed it, we made sure that it's in a way that is extensible and any uh, develop developers in organizations, they can find these features useful and use it in their build infrastructure. 
Also, we provide a native build cache feature where uh, users can say, okay, cache this file or cache this directory. And with this, they can move bits of data between jobs and uh, so, so that uh, if, if, if it's not yet ready to be persisted into your artifact storage, and they can use that. It can also be used for boosting up your performance by caching your most frequently used dependencies like uh, Maven downloads or Node.js uh, modules. Node.js modules. Also, we uh, we have uh, tied up with Sonar Cube for giving static build code analysis. So Scudaver has this notion of microservices within our infrastructure, and Sonar Cube is just one of them where users can send their built data for uh, offline analysis. So they can do code smells, they can get uh, coverage information, uh, and, and they can know the number of tests which were run as part of your build. And also, uh, we have uh, we have this feature called build metrics. Within, you can get detailed insights into how your pipeline behaves. So let me show you quickly on uh, how build metrics is going to look. Okay, let me uh, share it quickly. Okay, so. This is uh, this is a pipeline which actually builds Screwdriver itself, and uh, this is the build metrics for the pipeline over a period of month. So as you can see, we show information on the total duration a build event is taking and the overall time time it takes. You can drill deeper into the event, seeing uh, what are the build times for specific jobs. Um, so in this case, it shows the job broad took 20 minutes and these are deep linked and I can click on it to see uh, what, are, what are the specific steps which happened in that job. Also, if you scroll down, you can even dig deeper into that specific uh, job. Let's say I select the broad job and look at how much time each individual steps within the job took. So in this case, as I can see, the majority of the time is taken by our test job. And I can click on it to deep link into the specific test step to see the uh, logs for the step and see how much time the step took. All right, so let me go back to my uh, presentation. Uh, that was about build metrics. Can you see my presentation? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can. And actually, now we can't. Um, and just to let you know, Jitin, we have a couple of uh, questions in the queue. So as you get to a logical point, um, we'll, we'll fill those questions, OK? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. I think one of the specific questions about consolidating, I'm going to answer that in just a second. With the next slide. Uh, Ola, can you see my presentation now? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so there was a question on how can we make sure that we don't repeat the steps again and again. So this is how we do it. We have this feature called templates and commands. This is designed in a way that the screwdriver is opened up for subject matter experts. So the, the best practices around how you do a build, you can encapsulate that into a template. And to quickly see what a template is, uh, okay, so uh, I'll, I'll switch to my computer in a while, uh, but I just want to talk about what templates and commands are a bit more. So this opens up the screwdriver platform for subject matter expert. Like if you are, say you are a Node.js expert, and you can drive the direction in your organization how Node.js builds happens. And you can define steps which says, this is how you build it, this is how you test it, and this is how you deploy it. It should have certain code coverage or it should meet certain quality constraints. You can build all those intelligence into a template. And any user of uh, who is building Node.js, you can say that you have to use or you can use this template as an option. And once they use this, all this uh, encapsulated things, they, they, they get it for free. Right. And, uh, and same thing goes for shared commands. So shared commands, is, so template is for a job 
and command is for a step. So you can say, okay, so how you want to use your specific, your tool. Let's say I want to use uh, Spinnaker for doing my deployments. You can build a shared command out of that and expose that in a way that any user in screwdriver can use, yeah, can use the shared command. And that command can be for doing deployments, that command can be for doing compilation or uh, integrating with a service like uh, Source Labs for doing your functional testing, right? And how this looks like, let me quickly share my screen. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so can you see, can you see Scudavi UI now? Yes. Okay. So this is how templates look like. So in this case, uh, they are namespaced. And let's say uh, these are the templates under Python namespace, all right? So all these templates, uh, so templates can do one specific thing. Uh, let's say this is a template for Python validate type. And this is how users will use it. They will simply say template Python validate type. Now behind the scenes, what this template does is it, it can use uh, two containers. One is Ubuntu or uh, something called Mini Linux. And by default, it uses the Mini Linux. And these are all the steps which are encapsulated with the template. So the template owner, who in this case is an expert in Python, um, they, they, they define the template. And the only thing the users need to do is just refer the template in their job. So now this main job will run whatever steps which are defined in this template. And this is how you can use, uh, you, you can avoid re uh, solving the same problem again and again. Create a template and uh, uh, create a template and let the users in your organization start using it. So they get all the shared steps for free. All right, so now switching back to my presentation, all right, uh, can you see my screen presentation? Yes, sir. All right, so that was about templates and commands. And uh, so, so this is what, so templates and commands basically allows the developers to integrate the CD toolings of your choice. So using this, you can bring in tools like Tecton or Spinnaker within your infrastructure. Right. And uh, so uh, to speak about a couple of integrations we have within Verizon Media. So we have a lot of subject matter experts uh, which, who use Chef, who use Ansible, and we have also toolings which integrate with services like Source Labs and Posa. So within Verizon Media, these are exposed as shared commands. And uh, so any user within Verizon Media can use these commands to, to uh, talk to Source Labs to launch your functional test or use Foresight to run scanning uh, for your license vulnerabilities. And, and oops, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so uh, speaking of uh, external contribution, we collaborate a lot with Yahoo Japan. Uh, they are one of our core core contributors. So some of the features like shared commands, like that was entirely designed and implemented by Yahoo Japan. And uh, we, we, would, we do uh, bi-weekly sync-ups where the priorities of both teams are, uh, are, are brought up and we, we decide, okay, this is the priority for this week and, uh, and work on that. So they work pretty much independently from us uh, and, and track the feature development. And, uh, uh, and these are a couple of useful links we have. Um, sorry. Um, so we have our blog. Any, any new feature we do, we publish a blog post based on how, how it's done and how it's done the usage, our user guide, our code of contact. And if you are interested in contributing uh, information on how, how that can happen. And a quick overview on our decision-making process. So our priorities are established. We have an, a public uh, GitHub Kanban board. So any issues which are uh, which our users create, this is where it get prioritized. And right now the priorities are determined based on uh, the requirements of the two primary companies which are involved in the work, which is Verizon Media and Yahoo Japan. 
and all the design decisions they are pretty well documented and uh, within within the public github repositories uh, and for release methodologies we use semantic release to track packet versions and all the components of screwdriver we have three main components ui api store uh, all of these are published as docker containers in public docker hub and within Verizon Media, we also use the same containers. And all these are designed in a way that it's extensible. As, uh, so if any organization has their own specific needs, they can build on top of these Docker containers. And these components are designed in a way that uh, more behavior are pluggable into it. Um, so this is pretty much about the blog. And scudava.cd, that's our central uh, place where you can see everything. I'll quickly switch my screen over there to give an overview. But uh, that, that's pretty much I wanted to share. And okay, Kirtan, we have some questions queued up. Yep, let so, me quickly go through that. Yeah, let me, let, me, um, let me see if I can frame them for you. There were three questions that came up. So first of all, thank you. Thank you for, sh for sharing that, uh, Jitin. During the, during the course of the presentation, um, I detected three questions or three themes that came up regularly. Um, some of them were addressed, so let me frame them and then we can see if there are other questions. Um, one of them had to do with external collaborators. You mentioned Yahoo Japan, and I was wondering um, if you could share a little more about, um, about the relationship with them and um, with, other, um, with other users, contributors, um, and also our experience with moving from a Yahoo-centric um, uh, usage of screwdriver to Verizon Media which included really effectively other companies as well. Sure, uh, sure. Thanks for framing that, Bill. And uh, to speak about Yahoo Japan, we have a very special relationship with them. They've been uh, very much in, involved with uh, very early in the cycle of screwdriver creation, and they are one of the core contributors. So some of the features like uh, share commands, they completely designed and implemented it. And yet another feature which comes to my mind is branch filtering. Uh, uh, so Yahoo Japan drove that feature, they did the design. And uh, so any issues we work on, we create issues in our public GitHub account. Like, uh, let me quickly show that. Uh, so that is where we collaborate. And I'll, I'll show you some, I can show you some specific uh, examples. Uh, okay, so. Can you see my computer now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is the Kanban board, which I was talking about earlier, where we collaborate our development, All right? So we have a backlog, all these issues come from our open source. So we design everything in open source. So nothing is designed or created in a way that that is specific for one, any one specific organization. So any of the features we do, we make sure that it's done in a way that it solves the open source. Right? So this is one case uh, of a new feature recently completely driven from Yahoo Japan. So this was a feature where we need to trigger a pipeline based on a GitHub release tax. So our typical workflow like, works like this. So any open source user, they come and create an issue in our backlog, right? And in here, then we start the discussion on uh, the design stuff. And ultimately, uh, after all the inputs are taken, we prioritize it and make sure that it's brought up in this board at the top of the backlog. And uh, then someone will start pick up the issue and start implementing. So in this case, all these are uh, or all these contributions are made from the Yahoo Japan team, and uh, uh, and they completely worked upon the feature, made their commits, sent pull requests, and accepted. And we have seen a lot of uh, few pull requests which came in from external users as well. Uh, for example, recently there was an issue with uh, Bitbucket. We have integration with Bitbucket as well. So there was this one user who was using Bitbucket, but this was not uh, used within our organization, right? So in this case, this user created the issue and he went ahead and created the pull request for fixing it itself. So we reviewed the code, merged the PR, and uh, then the fix for Bitbucket is in our infrastructure now. Okay, Jintan, um, let me, you know, I think that you're also, you happen to also be answering the second question, which had to do around 
um, governance and and our open source uh, friendly model. Um, you know, I guess one of the questions that came up is, uh, you know, how do we govern this? How do we operate? Are we like total control? Do the folks, do our collaborators, um, let's say folks in Yahoo Japan who collaborate with us, do they have admin access? You know, could they, could they add to the project as well? Um, and are we looking as we expand this into the foundation, are we receptive to, uh, to having other uh, parties come in and, um, and help us govern this project? So, uh, so, so I think totally Yahoo Japan has admin access uh, ex uh, to our repositories. Um, so uh, they can create pull requests, they can, they can merge it. So the way we want to go about is exactly like how this user came about. He had a problem and he wanted a fix, so he gave the code contribution. Now, how we want to go about this, if this user says, okay, I want to be part of this code ever journey and keep contributing code so we get some confidence on uh, the, the direction is quality, and he can totally be a contributor within the Skudev infrastructure. So, uh, so I think we are totally open for uh, ceding this control or granting this access to more users as and when we transition to the community. I, I just want to also, uh, this is where I just want to also add that currently we have a bi-weekly meeting that goes along with uh, Yahoo Japan and us, and that meeting can totally open up to the entire open source community where we can collectively uh, discuss uh, backlog priorities and move forward. So uh, that making that uh, meeting public can be done on, as soon as you know the next from the next meeting itself. So thank you. There, there was one there was one last question on the chat, and then I'll open it up if there's any questions that have come up sub subsequently. Um, but the last question on the chat, and, and actually I'll take it. I think it, it really had to do with how we as an industry can ensure that you know we're not duplicating efforts. I mean, we spent a lot of time at Yahoo and, and now across Verizon Media building this out. Um, I think that's precisely why we're coming to this foundation. I mean, we're so glad that the foundation was recently formed. When we saw it, we immediately reached out and said, you know, we, we also don't want to see everyone creating, you know, similar, um, t you know, similar solutions, um, you know, for the same problem. What we want to do is take the solutions that we've built, donate them to the foundation and work with our peers across the industry so that each of us can focus on solving um, part of the problem and then you know, build a consolidated, neutral, um, expanding you know, uh, platform that we can all use. Um, so we're, we're actually here because we, we get it. Like, um, we wanna make sure that we're not building something that locks us out of great technologies that are coming out of our peer companies. And we also want to make sure that our, the technologies that we built and that we're using and that others um, could be used uh, across our peer companies too, because we believe in open source. Um, and that's, I mean, that's really why we're here. Um, so uh, if any, you know, if anyone else on, uh, from the foundation or listening in has questions uh, that either are dropped in the chat um, or want to pipe in um, now, please do. And then if not, I'll, hand the mic back over to uh, Kosoki for the rest of the uh, presentation. I, I have a question, this is Andy. Yeah. Uh, you made the statement that this was, you know, a, a, an open source project and that you built nothing specific for Verizon Media. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to, I think, one of the core questions of why does Verizon Media then invest in this project if they get nothing specific for them so it's it's not that they are not getting nothing specific out of it so this project is currently handling over 50 percent daily bills within verizon media so what with, with with this what we have proved is this project has the necessary feature set and the scalability that it can handle bills at that scale and uh, we haven't built this with any technical dependency within any specific product within Verizon Media. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't use technologies or, uh, or, or specific thing from Verizon Media. So as I uh, described earlier, Scudover is flexible enough that it can, it can take in specific tooling needs which are present in some organi in your specific organization. In I see, this, I see. In this case, that is Verizon Media. I interpreted the statement to mean that you weren't necessarily interested in, you know, stakeholder specific features. So thank you. That was a good clarification. Right, we, we use this. I mean, as, as, uh, as Jitin said, we use this over 50,000 times a day, um, you know, across, across um, just about, you know, all the builds that we do across the company for mobile and web and, and everything in between. Um, but we just wanted to make sure that it wasn't locked in 
Um, so actually when Yahoo became part of Verizon Media and then we reached out to uh, folks at AOL and said, you know, hey, like your environment is completely different from ours, but we have a very generic build tool that we use. We'd like to use our very generic build tool to build your environments. They looked at it and it's like, yeah, this is completely different than what we have, but it's very flexible and scalable. Therefore, you know, the folks at AOL who are now part of our company also use it. And, and based on our experience expanding to um, the AOL builds that we do, as well as Yahoo Japan and, and a few other smaller companies, we're pretty confident that any company out there that does CICD at scale would be able to drop this in, um, in their environment and use it. Um, so moving to more questions. So you said this has been open source since 2016. So it's been three years. Like what's the experience of, you know, I guess what was the, yeah, how, how was that? How was it like? What's the adoption level? What's the did you? I guess I presumably you, you did it partially to you know get more uh, adoption, but also more contributions. Like did that you mentioned that like, Yahoo Japan is a big contributor. And I actually met some of these folks back in Tokyo. Um, so and then, uh, but did, did you also get the other contributors that you're looking for? Like what was the experience of the past few years as open source project? Like? You know, I'll share that it was for us. It was it wasn't just about you know like our mission wasn't let's get a million contributors. Uh, and that wasn't, in 2016, that really wasn't the goal. It was really, let's make sure that it's open source. Let's make sure that we haven't locked anything in, that we could work with other companies, um, and that as we had uh, opportunities that we were able to bring um, to, to really leverage those opportunities without lock-in. We were also going through, as a company, um, a transition in 2016 and 2017 um, as, as the company itself was sold. So, you know, the objective really wasn't let's get as many external contributors as we can. Um, the, the objective was let's make sure that when the time is right, we'll be able to do that. We think the time is right now. Um, we think the time now that we have the CD Foundation as, as really a, a shared resource in the industry, um, we think we're ready now to expand the, um, the community that we have and, and really build on what we have demonstrated in the past and say, great, you know, we have a great relationship with a few partners. We would like a great relationship with even more partners. And from our open source uh, CD Slack channel, we have seen uh, folks from a couple of different organizations coming and asking questions on, okay, how, how, how do I do this? And that's how we, we also pretty much realize, oh, there are users out there who are running screwdriver within their organization. But right now we are not actively tracking it, but uh, we, we want to do more on uh, building those collaborations. I'm sorry, I, I was too busy typing in MST. Are you talking about the contributors or are you talking about the users when you say you're not tracking? So, so users. So what I'm saying is that uh, there are uh, a couple of users out there who are taking screwdriver and running it in within their organizations. Right. I mean, it, you, you know, you can go to the, you can go to the um, GitHub, <laughs> you know, to see, to see all the activity, of course. Right. Um, so. so github.com slash screwdriver dash CD. Um, uh, yeah, we also have at, at the screwdriver page can I add one thing? I've got my skill. So I just yeah. want to also say that uh, once the uh, the recent uh, integrations with uh, AOL, Verizon, etc., our open source office itself uh, uh, is is beefed up. I think we have a great uh, open source team now. Uh, Gil is leading the team, and we are kind of going all out in terms of how. Uh, the, the 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 products that we have used internally at scale can be uh, can be made sure can be made available for all the users outside. At this point, um, this project is available for users to contribute, use it. Um, there is no uh, this pretty much it is it is as good as any any open source library. Uh, we we are not in the business of uh, any uh, enterprise um, solutions or selling or etc. It's just that. We saw this software work for us at scale, uh, high performance, extremely secure, and we believe that the community can can really um, uh, benefit from it. And we also saw uh, the leadership at City Foundation uh, uh, was a great opportunity. So we believe uh, that City Foundation can also enable and provide 
platforms and opportunities for the software to be uh, benefited for all the community. And as a quick side note, so I joined the company almost a year ago, and my entire focus is on the open source community. So content events, growing contributors, and external exposure. Um, and so Screwdriver is one of the projects that I actually work on. So we're very, very serious about community efforts. Cool. Yep. Okay, so as you see, we have, we got a site, it's fully, you know, the, the code is, is documented, we have a guide. Um, and what we're really looking for is, is partnership with the foundation. I mean, we're, again, we're excited that there exists this foundation. We think that there's this great opportunity for us to work with the foundation, first of all, to understand where some of our partner companies are going with respect to some of the other technologies in the world of CICD, um, to see how we could incorporate and make sure that we're going in the direction that others are and, and you know, putting together what we need for our company, but also making sure that um, other companies can use this. Um, so we're, again, we're here to contribute code and, and a team um, to a shared cause, but we're also here to work together with, um, with this group so that you, know, you guys can help us steer and make sure that we're providing the things that others don't have and that others are providing the things that we don't have um, and, and together we can really just partner to make C CICD even better across the industry. Yeah, I think it's, um, I mean, I, I think it's great that, um, I mean, one of the, my, what I was really hoping to do with CDF is like we can, like a, a bigger group of people who are passionate about solving the problem in this space can, can get to join hands together and then make a bigger impact collectively. And that's sort of like, I think the beautiful part of open source. And, so I'm loving, loving to have you guys, you know, to, to show up and there, you know, there seems to be eager to collaborate and also that's wonderful. Um, I think what the, the, the questions that this kind of emphasis underscores for me, which, you know, has been kind of like a, a problem all along, well, the, the challenge all along that needs to be solved was how to, how to actually join, join hands more effectively as opposed to, you know, like we all bring our own toys and like a play in a different, you know, play, play, um, play in a different, you know, like, so when, when I have my kids play with other friends, like sometimes they're in the same, around the same table and then they're all playing with their cell phones. They're not talking, they're interacting. And that would be a shame, I think. Um, so, you know, that's something I, I, I don't have, really have a clear idea at the moment of how to avoid that situation. Um, in the Jenkins project, that, that's kind of like my, my go-to example of like how we solve the problem. The, you know, we, we did have a number of people taking on, trying to take on similar challenges from different like angles. And generally because the investment in those things are smaller, like you know, they are basically working on their own plugins. It wasn't too much trouble to kind of make them kind of work on the same thing by abandoning some level of code. But here, the amount of things that we collectively have done in our on cell phones, so to speak, it's pretty big. So I, I feel like there's different approaches needed, but I don't you know, I don't have them. Um, so that's something I feel like uh, we, and we, we all need to figure out if we have to make a bigger difference. And that's how I felt like. But um, any, any other thoughts from other, other people? Um, what's your, what's your initial reaction slash take? I think the next step would basically be to submit a proposal, a formal proposal, right? And then we would yep. pass on the GitHub issue. Yeah. So, yeah, time to put the process to the actual execution. <laughs> do you have, um, do you guys, the folks from Verizon Media, like, do you have, uh, do you have that information already passed to you, or maybe I can send it to you? Yeah, we do. Or, great. Any, any questions on those that you wanted to ask? Oh, well, we first wanted to share the, so we have the, the uh, like a questionnaire. We have, um, I think a lot of it answered. Uh, we really wanted to first present some more details so that the foundation knew what it is that we were talking about and the scope, um, you know, how, how um, well built and thought out it is. Um, so that when you receive uh, the proposal, you'll have a little more context about it. Um, but we'll take that next step. We'll submit the proposal and just, you know, we're here to be, we're here to partner. And I think that, um, that your question is really the question of the foundation. It's like the purpose right. I think of this foundation is, is to serve 
um, the community in helping us work together so that we're not just all playing on our cell phones, but you know, playing a shared game together. And we're here to, um, we're here to do that, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, hey, um, my name is James Kuba. I work at Verizon Media. I'm sorry I'm a little late to the, the meeting here, but uh, I think your question really goes to the heart of why we're here, uh, that we're keen on uh, understanding where we can leverage uh, commonalities or work that other people have done. Uh, we really believe that, uh, you know, high tide floats all boats and working together, uh, we'll be able to make all of our uh, offerings better. Uh, including screwdriver that we're showing uh, today. Yeah. So uh, I think that's uh, aligned uh, with uh, what the foundation's after. Uh, and it's something that I'm really keen on uh, a, a direction that we need to take with screwdriver. Great. And um, I mean, clearly you guys built some awesome software. So congrats on that. Thank you. Yeah, that's a uh, GT V new. Yeah. That's that. Listen, the, the team is great. So, um, if there are any other questions um, from the folks, I mean, we've we've taken we've taken a bit of time, but there's um, everything's open, right? Everything's on GitHub. Everything's uh, documented. So please, please do take a look at it. Um, reach out to us, and uh, you know, let us know how we're doing with respect to our our proposal and our next steps, so that we can continue to work together. But again, thank you for 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 everyone taking the time um, to uh, to hear us out. Wonderful. Um, all right. So I guess just by using the many four minutes, um, maybe just um, I guess. Sure. Um, who is sharing our screen right now? Um, should I try to switch over, or do you still have it up? Because you can. Yeah, I guess stop sharing. We can take over. Yeah. I'll take over. Share. Um, yeah, so I just last week we discussed um, <clears throat> the CDF working group proposal that I started and the main feedback was um, that uh, it would be easier to review if we included the full scope of also the CDF SIGs. Um, I had intentionally left that out the first time, but um, based on that feedback, I added a, another proposal here on um, SIGs. So it's easier to compare when one would be appropriate versus the other for different efforts going on. Um, Looks like uh, we have one comment here, which makes sense. I'll resolve that. I sent this out, I think, last week, and then Kay uh, from Microsoft reviewed. I'm not sure if anybody else um, had a chance to review. Yeah, I wanted to use this opportunity to remind you folks that let's let's, um, let's push this ball to the goal line. That includes myself of uh, reviewing, like uh, providing comments and inputs and whatnot. Sure. Yeah. So I'll give people a couple more days. I know we have a holiday coming up to add comments here to this doc. After that, I will probably early next week turn this into a pull request and mark down, um, and then we can kind of wrap it up on GitHub. Yeah. Uh, it's sense. easier to iterate here. So if you haven't gotten a chance to take a look, uh, please do soon. All right. Hey, Dan, can you uh, link this doc to the agenda, please? I think I just did right yeah, before. You just did cool. that. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so, all right, um, and then I think Kay, I'm not sure if she's in the call, but she actually went through and put together a prototype proposal for a security working group for a security cool. stake that she wants to start. So if we have those side by side, we can kind of do a beta test of how this works out in practice. I, I am on the call and um, yeah, so I put together a, it's just a very preliminary draft, but based on the, the SIG, um, uh, process to propose and I, I don't know how you want me to share that I can send it out to the alias or um, what, what Yeah, I think yes. if you can send that to send the link to I, I mean either link it from this doc or um, Into the like a POC alias or somewhere that the people can look at at the same time They're going through this document. I think that that would be probably the best impact. Okay. I can do that. Yeah, that's wonderful Is this doc in a location other people can put documents in or is it best if I create my own doc somewhere and, and just link? Yeah, I don't think we have a great way of sharing documents or any kind of folder or anything set up now. It's fine if you just create something that anybody has access to. Okay, I'll do it. They're mainly just used for temporary iteration until we move to GitHub. Okay. Yeah. All right, anything else? 
yes, this almost brings up the top of the hour. So I guess then we'll see you in the two weeks from now, which should be fine. It shouldn't be any strange things. See you everyone. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess we'll see you next day in two weeks. Right. Have a good Thank day. You, Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right.